Today, I am going to write your diet. This is the second video we've done creating your macronutrient prescription. If you have not watched the other video, watch that one after this. The last one was about going from a cut to maintenance to muscle growth without adding fat. This one is purely fat loss. This one comes from Blondritz, who is also known as Amanda. And she is 28 years old, she's 5'9", 230 pounds, and she is looking for weight loss. So this is gonna be a perfect one for you to watch if your goal is fat loss, because this is a very generic goal. Obviously, a lot of us want to lose weight, lose fat. It's a very common goal, I shouldn't say generic, it's a very common goal, but so is her training, so is her lifestyle, and so are her struggles. So let's get into it. All right, so we have a 28 year old female who is 5'9", 230 pounds with the goal of weight loss. She has a prior history of not having a good relationship with dieting. Biggest key indicator. Now, again, just like the last video, I'm gonna put out the caveat that I have very little information. This is literally all I have from her. When in reality, when I work with a client, we will do a full phone interview then they will fill out a 30 question questionnaire giving me more insight and I will look through their food logs. After getting all this, I'll probably quiz and ask them more questions and then finally I'll write a prescription. So this is just working with what I have, but I still think this is gonna be very, very applicable to a lot of people watching. She only does one strength workout per week and it's a full body program and then she does 30 minute walks with her dogs every day. Given that she has a poor relationship with weight loss protocols in the past, I'm not going to make dramatic changes right out the go because we want to slowly instill habits and show her that fat loss isn't necessarily easy, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming, stressful, or create a sense of anxiety. That is the biggest key. I don't care if we lose weight at the slowest rate possible. I want that weight to stay off sustainability is more important than speed. Remember that. Now, we are diving into this. Step one is gonna go 80-20. I'm not gonna have her track calories. I'm not gonna have her track macros. I'm not gonna tell her to train more. I'm not gonna do anything. All I'm gonna say is that I want 80% of your food to be whole foods. She's gonna ask, what is 80% if I don't know my caloric intake? I'm gonna say, it does not matter. I don't care. I don't want to look at hard numbers. I don't wanna to get too nitty gritty or picky with anything. I just want you to focus on more whole foods. That's it. Eventually, we'll go to step two. I want you to work on 90-10 rule. So we're gonna tighten it up even more. Now what this could look like is she can go from not eating any greens in her diet to eating some greens, to eventually eating some lean proteins, to eventually taking fish oil every day, to eventually seeing how much water she's taking in. And then eventually we might actually start meal prepping. After that, we might actually approach it from a protein per meal. Like every meal has to have protein in it. Then we might say, hey, let's measure our fats with our thumbs and our carbs with our fists. Like we're gonna go that habitual handful diet route every step of the way until we get to a point where 90-10 is not only producing weight loss, but it's sustainable and it's not stressful. After that, we're gonna go to calories and protein. So that's step three. This might be eight weeks later, because here's the reality. We don't need to rush through these steps. If 80-20 helps her lose 10 pounds over six weeks, great. Why would we change anything if it's easy to do and implement and it's working? Do not fix what's not broken. One of the biggest problems with many coaches out there is they think a weekly check-in form is an adjustment sheet. It is a reason and excuse that I need to adjust this diet. That's what they're paying me for. That's not the case. They are paying you for results and they are paying you for support and accountability. That weekly check-in is the only thing that is keeping them consistent every week. It serves a much bigger purpose than just adjusting macros. Therefore, I will say keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going week after week after week without any adjustment if it is working for them. And I've done that with clients. I will make a very smart, strategic adjustment and I will watch it work for weeks and weeks on end without adjusting anything because why would I adjust? Besides the point, we're gonna go this, this, as long as we need on each step until we get to step three, which is gonna be calories and protein. Now we're actually integrating some numbers and I hope by the time we have talked, we've probably talked about journaling, we've talked about lifestyle habits, we've talked about getting more sleep, stress management. She has accountability and human interaction with me on a very frequent basis. I think we will feel tr comfortable tracking calories and protein at this point, even though she has a poor relationship with food from past experiences with other coaches or diets. We get to this point. Now these numbers are based on her current weight. I hope by the time I get to step three, this is no longer her weight. 
So these are not going to be accurate if we have dropped weight since then. However, there's a lot of people watching this who may have uh, struggles with diets or not wanna track full-blown macros. They want a little more flexibility. This is still gonna work for you. So calories and protein looks like this. We're gonna go 230 pounds times eight. Times eight seems pretty damn low for most people when you look at calculations. However, she has a good amount of weight that she wants to lose and she's only strength training once a week completely different. Her activity is not that high and we are doing it for weight loss and health purposes. We are not doing it for performance to be the strongest person ever or build maximum amount of muscle. We're just getting in the gym and getting a sweat on. So because of that, we're going to go with a low intake of 1840, 1840 calories, which is eight times her body weight. We're going to do this five to six times a week, ideally six with only one refeed free day, you could call it per week. However, if adherence is an issue and she has social activities pretty constantly, we might do two a week. Shit, we might do one every two weeks. It all depends on the individual and a refeed for a weight loss subject like this really isn't serving any metabolic or hormonal purpose whatsoever. It's a psychological break from the diet. It's just a day to have more flexibility, be a little more social and feel a little bit better on your diet. If it was a, a hormonal approach, it would be three, four, five days every three to four weeks, getting a real diet break in, but that's not the case with this one. So we got eight times her body weight, gives us 1840 for five to six days a week, and then we're gonna take a refeed day at 12 times her body weight, which is normally a rate I would like an athlete to lose fat on, 12 times her body weight. However, she's training one time a week and going on walks, we don't need to do that much. So 230 times 12 gives us 2,760, and we're gonna do that one to two times a week. Her protein is gonna be set at 0.8 grams per pound, which is 184, but we're gonna make that 185 because I don't like rounding, or I, I do like rounding up or down to the nearest five. 185 grams of protein, which is more than enough. We don't need to set her protein at her body weight because she's gonna be climbing that body weight down. And if she has a poor relationship with food, if she's not tracking her diet currently, she's not into a lot of strength training, I can assume she's probably not consuming that much protein as it is. So this is probably going to be a huge bump up from where she's currently at, which is really, really common in the general population. So we might stay here for weeks, if not months. If it's working, it's working. Again, I'm not gonna adjust something that's not broken. After this plateaus out, when we, remember each step we take, we're gonna stay there till we plateau. So we do the 80-20 until she plateaus. We tighten it up to a 90-10 until she plateaus. Then we tighten it up by tracking calories and protein while still having some flexibility until she plateaus. And then from there, we're gonna to go to macros. Still not dropping her calories whatsoever because we're taking this slow, gradual approach, we can still see success in fat loss without lowering calories time and time and time again. Instead, I'm going to adjust and change fine details within her caloric intake that lead to fat loss, that isn't dropping calories through the floor. So step four is full blown macros. We're keeping her protein at 185 grams. We're gonna give her 0.35 grams per pound of uh, fat. 0.35 times your body weight is probably the minimal I will ever go with a client. It's usually the minimal I'll go with a male who wants to build muscle or lose fat while maintaining muscle. It's a pretty low end. However, because we're basing this off her current weight and not her goal weight or where she wants or should be, we're gonna go with that lower end spectrum because when she gets to her goal, this is gonna be a good amount of fat. And 80 grams of fat, I feel confident with being more than enough to support her hormonally and give her some flexibility in the diet to make sure she has a variety of foods and she's able to be flexible, social, and get enough of the different fats to support her hormones and nervous system. After that, we are left with 380 calories, which is not much at all, and it only leaves us with 95 grams of carbs. However, she is only training one day a week Therefore, she doesn't need many carbs. So we're actually going with a low carb approach. On top of that, if she does have a significant amount of weight to, that she wants to lose, and when I say significant, I'm talking 20 pounds or more, um, I am okay with going pretty low carb because we want to deplete. We want to push a higher fat, lower carb approach, help insulin sensitivity, which could have some resistance being overweight and struggling while not strength training that much because we know strength training increases uh, insulin sensitivity. So 95 grams of carbs might be low, but I don't think that's a bad choice at all. It'll be filled with one to two servings of fruit per day, 
four to five servings of greens per day. And if there's anything left in that, she can have some starchy vegetables. Starchy vegetables aren't going to be an essential nutrient or a required macronutrient for her and her lifestyle and her goal. Therefore, I'm not too worried about eliminating carbs for the most part. And she still has one to two days at this uh, 2760 calorie where we're just tra uh, tracking calorie and protein. So if she wants to triple her carbs on those days, she has one to two days a week where we can do that. And the amount of times per week that I'm allowing that depends on our communication, her results, and what I think she's gonna adhere best to. So overall, when we look at this, this is a pretty low activity, fat loss approach that is taking a very habitual approach, leading her into macronutrient-based dieting. And eventually, we're gonna reverse this process. So after we get to success, we get to her ultimate goal for macros, we're probably going to reverse, diet her a little bit to try to give her more calories. Once we get to a healthy maintenance that is giving her more flexibility and socially able to eat more because her calories are set higher while maintaining this new weight, we are going to reverse from macros to calories and protein to eventually 90-10 to eventually 80-20 and then she's just intuitive eating because she knows how to do this because we guided her through the process with education-based coaching. And that is the diet. Can't remember her name, but that's okay.